Hey, thanks everybody for joining us for our continuing Tomcat track here today on Tuesday, September 29th. Jean Frederic Claire will present HTTP2, HTTP3, and SSL TLS state of the art in our servers. Welcome, Jean Frederic. Yep, thank you. Okay, so uh, I was I would basically uh, uh, start to speak about HTTP then uh, HTTP3 and of course, all those things are related with uh, SSL TLS. So I will say something about TLS and uh, and uh, SSL. So I will cover basically uh, HTTP uh, two, uh, LPN, and uh, then H two. I will uh, speak about our server where we are at, uh, and uh, I have also some demo. Uh, which uh, I guess, uh, as usual, uh, it's H two H three is a kind of an experimental stuff. So uh, there's a lot of chance that the things will be broken. Uh, so um, I'm working for Red Hat. I've spent a lot of years writing Java, C, and other software. I'm, I'm kind of old guy, as you can see. I've been. Uh, I've, I've been in the uh, open source uh, since uh, uh, before 2000, so that's quite a long time. And I'm a cyclist and runner, uh, usually at the Apache Con, the real Apache Con. Uh, I'm organizing uh, the morning runs, which we can't do. And I'm living in Neuchâtel, Switzerland. So, uh, why do we move to a new protocol? Uh, HTTP 1.1 is, is uh, uh, kind uh, uh, old uh, from uh, 99. Uh, at that time, uh, you were very happy when you were displaying one page. Uh, uh, then the things have been moving. Uh, I've, the, basically, a page is uh, several megabytes of data, that image, uh, it has JavaScript, uh, it has some style. Um, so uh, this protocol uh, start to be uh, not really adapted and quite inefficient. So at some point we were looking for a better protocol. Edge uh, two uh, was coming because basically it's a it's a binary protocol. Uh, it uses frame. Uh, it's uh, using multiplexing. It's based on Speedy, uh, which was done by Google several years ago. Uh, it requires uh, uh, TLS security everywhere. Uh, basically, uh, uh, the browser will force you to use uh, HTTPS and strong cipher. Uh, the forward proxy is not allowed. Uh, you can do clear text. A clear text can, can be interesting, uh, for example, when you have a reverse proxy. Uh, I would not advise people to to, uh, to unencrypt data and then uh, send it unencrypted uh, between two machines, even the company network, because you never know uh, what what could happen. Uh, there's always a chance uh, that there's someone uh, hacking uh, the company network. So uh, uh, if if you do that, uh, be very very careful. So next. Um, so the H2 is based on uh, two specification, uh, uh, basically two RFCs. Uh, it's backed uh, by the uh, Internet Task Force. Uh, it requires you uh, to use uh, the application uh, uh, layer uh, protocol negotiation, uh, which is also an RFC. Uh, this is something that uh, was mentioned uh, in uh, Mark talk, uh, where basically Java 8 was uh, supposed to implement stuff, and but not supporting it. That's a point of the fun. So multiplexing, what does mean multiplexing? Is basically there uh, in one socket. The, the, the socket is the big blue uh, ugly stuff uh, on my slide. Uh, you can have uh, several requests uh, taking place. Uh, you, for example, can exchange header. Uh, header is basically, uh, basically you, you have a, a head request and then you will have a reply. Uh, you can uh, have a header like a get and get some data. You can have a post. 
uh, with headers and then some data. And you have something interesting, is which is named uh, server push, where basically uh, the server uh, could decide that uh, you want to send you something. Like for example, you have a very nice application that uh, is going to uh, show a bunch of images or uh, requires a, a, a large Java uh, script application uh, that you're going to send uh, as a jar. So basically you're going to push it to the customer while he's, for example, entering his logging or something like that. So that's quite interesting. Uh, a little more on the protocol. So basically, uh, uh, we have HTTP uh, header compression, uh, which means basically uh, everything uh, that you can see, like content lengths and all those standard uh, headers, uh, they're going to be compressed. Uh, that basically saves some data. Uh, you can request priorities. Uh, basically, uh, the browser can decide you want something earlier. Basically, you would need an application to do that. The server can decide that you want to send something faster. Uh, the server push, as I was already saying, is uh, basically uh, this. This is uh, basically you. You're going to have. A, you need some element of a page. You're going to send them in advance. You need. You know that your page needs some images. You're going to send them, and. All of this is uh, basically uh, 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 try to get uh, a faster and better rendering on browsers. Uh, remember, uh, it was uh, done by Google, so they were interested in uh, allowing you to navigate very fast. So this is uh, the main preoccupation of these things. They don't care about that it uh, increased the load of the server, but uh, what happened is like you're going to get your images or your application a lot faster on your browser. Uh, so where we are at the browsers, it had been uh, supported for a long, long time. Uh, so uh, you, like Firefox uh, uh, 42, I don't think anyone is still using it. Uh, Chrome 40 or Internet Explorer 11, uh, it's supported on uh, Opera and Safari, so um, you have it everywhere. Uh, statistics from two years ago now, uh, the uh, traffic server were basically uh, making, uh, they have their own implementation of H2, uh, which I will uh, speak about a little later. Uh, they said that the traffic for their website, uh, about 80% uh, uh, of uh, the browser are using H2, uh, which means uh, basically you have it nearly everywhere. So uh, basically the, my conclusion there will go for it. Um, this is just a small detail about how you get uh, the protocol working uh, without changing too many things uh, on your um, on your application on your server. Uh, basically, uh, this is a, a, a TSL. Uh, this is Wireshark uh, entry. Um, you it's a client. Uh, yeah, it's a Firefox. Uh, the Firefox is going to own the uh, application. Uh, protocol uh, negotiation, uh, the, the browser is going to send you uh, what is supporting and the client is going to uh, reply by what is supporting. Uh, in this example, it's a Tomcat uh, with the uh, uh, upgrade activated, uh, then the Tomcat is going to uh, reply that is supporting H2. There's some requirements which are quite easy to uh, nowadays. Like uh, if you're use, if you're still using uh, uh, Open SSL uh, 1.02 something, uh, you probably start to think you don't need to migrate to 1.1.1c uh, uh, or more. Um, it uh, was implemented in uh, Tomcat native uh, in um, in uh, Tomcat uh, um, uh, 8.5. Uh, it was requir requiring a quite um, a version of uh, Tomcat native that is uh, already old, or Java 9, which is already something quite now quite old. In HTTPD, it had been supported uh, since uh, 2.4.17. Uh, uh, that's quite a long, long time. It used an an, in, an external library, uh, lib uh, ng uh, uh, HTTP two, uh, which is a kind of a small compact library written in C. Graphic server, uh, which is the other uh, proxy we have in the uh, Apache Software Foundation. Uh, 
Uh, it's written in C++. Uh, it requires nothing else than uh, open SSL. So the status in Tomcat, everything is ready. You can use it. Um, you need a quite recent version of uh, Java. Well, it has been backported, so uh, uh, you can use it everywhere. Uh, with HTTPD, it, is, it had been there since a long, long time. Uh, and with traffic server, that's the same. Um, both traffic server and uh, uh, HTTPD have now uh, full support of all the pieces of the protocol. So if you look in the Tomcat, uh, what you have to do in order to, uh, to have the uh, uh, H2 in, in enable is basically you have to add a update protocol and uh, give it uh, its class name, uh, which is uh, basically uh, the H2 protocol. Uh, I have two examples in this slide. Uh, one is using um, some uh, uh, one. In, the first one is using a. Uh, uh, open SSL certificate, and the second one is using uh, the, uh, the standard uh, key store stuff with the standard change it password. So uh, this is a configuration when you uh, want to use Tomcat uh, uh, with uh, with Tomcat native, uh, you will have to tell it uh, the path uh, of the Tomcat uh, native uh, library. Uh, and you have to have a, the open. You have to have open SSL installed and appear installed. Uh, actually, uh, even the old uh, distribution uh, like Fedora 23 are supporting it. So basically, uh, you just install your Tomcat, uh, install the. Uh, you have the open SSL. You have the appear, and then uh, everything is ready. Oh, the, those are old slides with the um, with the performance. Uh, one of the questions is like basically, uh, we are doing uh, a bit uh, a more complex crypto, and we are doing we are doing uh, multiplexing and demultiplexing. So it was quite interesting to try to make a kind of a, a stupid test just to know if uh, this has some impact on the performance. Uh, we can see that it adds some it has using edge to have some performance issue but it's, it's not enough to really be worried like uh, here it's kind of trying to crash a server you can see that there's a something like about 10 percent increase which is uh, quite good and uh, this is uh, my test were kind of a bad example because it's just sending a file which is probably what you want don't want to do uh, when you're using edge 2 you're probably um, going to send Tons of small files here. Yeah, it's we are sending kinds of big files. So I will not do the demo right now. I will do the demo a little after uh, because there's a lot of chance that uh, something would go wrong and I will go out of time. Uh, so let's look to the uh, traffic server configuration. I don't know if any of you is using a traffic server, but in the traffic server you're going to uh, uh, tell it. Uh, that you're using SSL. Uh, here I'm running it on port 88. Uh, oh, no, sorry, on 8,888. Uh, 8, uh, 8, uh, you tell that you want to enable uh, H2. Uh, you configure the uh, TSL you want to use. Uh, you give it the uh, uh, um, uh, set and the key uh, file you want to use. Uh, you make a config remap, uh, which basically you it's a proxy, so you tell it that everything is going to go to the Tomcat. You can see that the Tomcat is running on the local host. Uh, you have to uh, uh, configure the uh, EPLO config uh, because basically uh, by default uh, the server. Uh, you, if you install the server, it's going to be uh, closed, so you have to open it. It's a proxy. You don't want to open a proxy uh, without configuring it correctly to the internet. So I have a small demo for that, which I will do later. Uh, let's look to HTTPD. Uh, for HTTPD, the configuration is also very easy. Uh, you're going to put a listen. You create a virtual host. 
uh, you tell it that uh, you want to use the H2 protocol in it. Uh, uh, you tell that you want the, that it order the protocol in the way you have ordered them. It's a uh, protocol order on, which will tell it that uh, please try to use uh, HD, H2 first. Uh, you, of course, have to enable the uh, SSL engine. Uh, you have to give him uh, the uh, certificate file uh, and the key file. And yeah, I have also given it a CR certificate file, which is not useful in this example. Uh, with uh, HTTPD, you can also uh, use it as a proxy. It could be interesting, for example, to have the SSL and uh, the demultiplexing done uh, in HTTPD and send the uh, things uh, in HTTP 1.1 uh, to Tomcat uh, or to any server that you can't upgrade. Uh, here, this example is using, I'm using H2 in uh, clear text uh, because, well, I was using Tomcat, so it was more easy. But you you could have here have the proxy pass, uh, HTTPD uh, uh, local host uh, Tomcat on its uh, normal port. And again, uh, if you do that, you must be very sure that uh, uh, you are in the safe network if you are going outside localhost. So I'll jump over the, the demo. So uh, the conclusion, if you want to do uh, H2, uh, uh, it's it's interesting. A uh, lot of places are already using it. Uh, I've, I think most of the uh, web server have, have know it, all those, the browser have it. So uh, if you have adopt uh, just go for it. So uh, then it will look quite good, but why do we do uh, HTTP 3 now? Well, basically because uh, the uh, H2 as HTTP 1.1, they're using the TCP IP. TCP IP have a small problem. If you lose one packet, it's going to block uh, this this connection, which basically, in the case of H2, have you have multi multiplexed everything uh, in one socket? I mean, you're going to block several connections. So the idea was we need to do something else. Uh, the choice was to use UDP. We don't have much source uh, on the um, Ethernet thread, on the Ethernet stack, so this is what we have to do. Uh, in UDP, the good thing is that the channel are independent. So you, you're going to be able to uh, send data if something is not acknowledged, uh, you will have to take care of it. Uh, of course, then you need a higher uh, protocol level to ensure the integrity, because you're going to send, for example, a page uh, in small package, but if one packet is lost, uh, you need to have a protocol to make sure that you're going to be able to repeat it. Actually, uh, to use it, uh, it's a bit tricky. It requires usually a patched version of OpenSSL. It uses UDP. Uh, people that are doing cloud don't like it, but but DNS is using UDP, so uh, we have it everywhere. So oh, I forgot to update this. Uh, I did update this one. Uh, okay, so the protocol was starting in uh, uh, March uh, 2018, and uh, we have still not make we are still not to make we are still to make some progress. Uh, it uses Quick, uh, which is a protocol. Uh, it requires TSL and it uses UDP. Uh, it basically going to transport uh, HTTP 1.1 like HTTP 2. Uh, you can to make it adaptable uh, with existing server, uh, we are going to use the either uh, uh, alt service, which is response alt service, where basically you're going to tell it H2 and uh, the same server and the port where the H2, uh, uh, the H3 is running. The same could apply with H2 in case you want, you put H2 there, but that's not used because you, you can use it directly with IPN. One of the problem is like basically a lot of people have their uh, UDP port closed. Uh, 
UDP uh, is still a bit slower in the kernel. I don't have make I didn't make extra measurements, so I'll, I'll I think it is still the case. Uh, it's li need a little more C CPU and memory because you have to reassemble the packet. Uh, the specification are done uh, through several RFCs, like six RFCs, so that's quite a lot of specification. So if you look, uh, let's look to what we have. Uh, if we compare uh, uh, HTTP2 and uh, HTTP3, uh, the transport, uh, in case of HTTP2, we use uh, uh, TCP. Uh, in case of uh, HTTP3, we are going to use UDP and uh, QUIC. Uh, we have streams. The streams are defined by the H2 uh, in HTTP2. Uh, they are in, defined by QUIC. Uh, can we do clear text? In the case of uh, H2, yes, but it's only for reverse proxy. Uh, for HTTP3, no, there's nothing in the specification. You can't do it. Uh, the streams are dependent in the case of H2. They are independent in the case of HTTP3. Uh, it had a it had also they both have header compression with a different name. Uh, both use a uh, allow uh, server push. Um, one use early data, which means basically it's going to be able to uh, uh, send data uh, uh, earlier. Uh, one, uh, the zero run trip and check, uh, this is something for TSL. Uh, basically, uh, the packets, uh, you're going to send packets uh, that might be outside the connection. So basically, you at the uh, TSL level, you want to uh, restart a connection without a long uh, dialogue. Uh, so basically, you are going to be able uh, to have some information for you uh, at uh, for your uh, TSL layer. Uh, so basically, you, you're going to be able to send this uh, information without making a round trip, which of course gives a problem because you will have at the application level to make sure you are not receiving some data twice. The H2 implementation, there's uh, several uh, H2 implementation. I've only listed the the one I've, I've been playing with, uh, one is uh, 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 Kish. Uh, Curl is using it, for example. Uh, you have uh, one uh, in uh, uh, NG uh, TCP2, which is uh, the same guys that the one are, which are doing the uh, HTTP2 uh, layer for uh, HTTPD. Uh, in curl, it's a kind of an experimental feature. Uh, for example, my uh, uh, Fedora does not support uh, that in curl. Um, in the browser, I've been uh, playing with Chrome. Chrome, uh, actually, uh, the uh, released version uh, are not supporting it. You need to uh, to use a 90 build. Uh, Firefox have it. Uh, it is, of course, not activated by default. You need to use a, a bad config to activate it. And so let's see what is the problem in O server. Uh, the problem in O server is basically uh, the uh, UDP socket API uh, for Tomcat for Java is incomplete, so that causes a problem for Tomcat. In HTTPD, uh, that will need time because uh, we will have to use uh, an external library. Uh, in traffic server, uh, there's a prototype working. Uh, it has been always be planned for the next version. Uh, it is still planned for the next version. I jump over the demo. Uh, I'll jump over that. Uh, so uh, the server I'm able to make to run uh, quite easily uh, is a traffic server. In the traffic server, you go basically uh, tell him that you want to use a UDP uh, thread. Uh, I've started one. You tell it that you're going to use a, a quick, uh, and you, then you tell it on which port you're going to use quick, and uh, you tell him some definition, and uh, you configure it. Uh, 
as you would configure it for HTTP uh, 1.1 or HTTP 1.3. And of course, it's a proxy, so you remap it to Tomcat, for example. So I have a small demo that if I have time, I will do. Um, so um, uh, this, this I will show in the demo. Uh, so those are screens uh, from my demo, which I will jump over. Um, so I will, uh, I'm careful because my demo might take some time. So basically I'm going to, to, uh, uh, to go to the conclusion about, uh, HTTP three. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's still a protocol draft. Uh, it's number 30 at the time of the writing, like, uh, now, uh, it use uh, UDP uh, versus TCP, so uh, it need that uh, basically people have to open uh, their fire uh, wall in order to get this. It need a forked version of OpenSSL or boring SSL in a lot of cases uh, for the run the run tribe, uh, the zero run tribe. Uh, the good thing is like uh, basically in Tomcat you would not have to rewrite your application uh, so you will you will you might have again uh, as soon as the stuff is supported correctly for the moment my recommendation is that wait it's not ready i have space for uh, uh, questions uh, so basically uh, i will try to answer the questions uh, if there's any uh, and uh, I will uh, show my demo. There are a few questions. Uh, yes, I, I've seen that. Uh, but um, when using HTTP um, two, can the client tell the server that it already has some resources to avoid the server push? Uh, you would have to write it in the uh, client application. Uh, normally, no, it's the server that decides okay, to send something. So your, your application needs to handle that. There's not really direct protocol support for it. No, it's there's no okay. really protocol support for it. Um, how does the browser request priority for some frames other over others? Uh, that's a detail of the protocol. I, I okay. don't know exactly. You, you need to write some code for it, probably. I thought I saw another question, but if it's there, I don't find it. The one that asked the question might just maybe retype it now. Um, you have about 10 minutes. So if you'd like to continue with your demo, I'll go ahead and jump in with any questions that arrive in the chat. Yes, I'm going to try to jump to the demo. So I'm still sharing the screen and I, I hope you see my, it's a bit small, but it's just a uh, tomcat. So uh, I have first, first the, I have, so I have a Tomcat running uh, with two pages. Uh, one is doing H2, that's the, that's the first one that uh, I've displayed before the demo, uh, just before making the presentation. So you can see uh, this is a counter of the time it takes to display this page. And uh, uh, this is a, a standard uh, HTTP uh, 1.1 page. So. Even with this uh, very stupid uh, um, application, uh, you already have some gain. Um, I have a longer page, I have a bigger pages. Uh, that's, uh, so this one is, uh, this is HTTPD uh, and uh, this is the H2. You can see that the difference is not always uh, so obvious. Uh, I know what it's H2 because I have uh, an indicator for it now. Um, so I can repeat the page. In, in case of Tomcat, uh, I have an application that uh, generate the, all those small images are the Tomcat icon, a bit, big, a bit bigger, and I can repeat usually. So it's displayed and you can see that um, 
so this is a normal page and you see you have the rendering uh you have the fact that so it's <laughs> it on a local host connection you it's very hard to demonstrate that uh, it is faster but if you do enough tries you will see that it's slightly faster So I've done some try with uh, H3. So this is H3. So this is uh, to get H3 running. Uh, basically, here I have a, I have a Tomcat, uh, uh, which is uh, which is uh, basically sending uh, the alternate service uh, header via uh, a small fil filter. Uh, and when I have displayed, uh, this is my home page of Tomcat. Uh, basically, just go to an application. Uh, when I debug the, the thing, uh, you can see that it's using H, H3 here yeah. on this. Oops. I want to go in the details. So you have, you have here the H3 protocol and So this is a page. Uh, this is a server. Which uh, so this is my my uh, small desktop. Which I was trying to demo uh, the fact that losing packet was interesting. Uh, so uh, here I have a. It's using H3, and I'm losing some something like three percent of the package, and uh, well, I'm lucky it worked. Uh, it didn't work before. And you can see that it's using the H3 protocol. So basically, uh, if you would be using uh, HTTP 1.1 or HTTP uh, 2 on this, uh, the time would be a lot longer, uh, which I'll, I don't want to, to try again because I'm going to uh, screw something and I only have uh, five minutes left. And I see that there's some question or something moving in the chat. Chris, there's some questions. Uh, yeah, Sigal was asking if the Tomcat images that you're displaying are all the same resource, or if you're making sure that they get downloaded individually by the browser. Uh, yes, I have a small servlet which basically is generating uh, random numbers. Uh, so each image is a new uh, is a new each image. Each small Tomcat is a new image each time I make a request. So it's not going to be cached. All right. Did you want to present anything else, or are you all finished? I think there are no more questions. I think I'm good. Uh, uh, I I want to leave five minutes for the next speaker. All right. That is Thank you very much, Jean Frederic. Our next speaker will be me talking about splitting your Tomcat installation for easier upgrades. So if you'd like to join us for that talk, we will be starting it in about five minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.